Welcome in for part 28, VOD watchers. Thanks for making it this far. I appreciate it immensely. Uh, throughout the video, if there's anything you feel like you want to comment on, please do. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, all that YouTube, you know, standard stuff. But I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch my stuff. Those of you that share what I do, thanks for doing that as well. If you ever want to catch me live, I'm live at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, any day except for Monday. So, hope you'll join us sometime. Thank you for being here. Oh, I don't even feel like shaving. I can tell you that. Although I probably should, just to kind of regain some level of control over myself. Actually, I think it is important for Arthur to shave and take care of himself. I think it, it's funny because I feel myself not wanting to shave. Like, I feel a vicarious sense of, like, depression about the state of the group and state of affairs right now. I'm not sure if any of you have been experiencing that, but it has gotten very difficult. And I think it's very easy to neglect oneself when you are experiencing depression. In fact, we often see that as an indication that a person is struggling. So I think in this moment, it's really important for us as Arthur to take a second and go shave. Go take care of yourself. Maybe take a bath next time we're in town. Very important to engage in self-care right now and to remind myself that I matter even if the group doesn't seem to think that I do. But it'll happen to you too. They'll stop looking soon enough, and that glass in your hand won't be so friendly neither. Tell her, Mr. Morgan. Tell her about time. I don't know too much about time, Miss Grimshaw. That's a bit beyond me. Well, maybe I'll get lucky and die first. <laughs> yes. Well, get to work. Vanity won't help you, young or old. Indeed, time catches all of us. So, I'm, I know that this might seem like it goes without saying, but I'm going to start off right here already. Um, when people load a significant amount of their identity into something that is time sensitive. The passage of time becomes a problem in and of itself. I'm talking about people who put a lot of stock into things like physical appearance, physical ability, uh, temporary things, fleeting things you kind of lose yourself as you get older and as time passes because like i think about athletes i work with a lot of athletes once an athlete's not able to compete at the highest level or maybe they're not able to compete in their sport at all that can be very devastating if you're a person who has built a significant amount of your social reinforcement and presence around your physical appearance you are inherently going to become less attractive as you age or you will be differently attractive but not necessarily in a conventional state sense, in part because we value youth attractiveness more so than we do elderly attractiveness. Well, Grimshaw is indicating that, right? Like, you know, we are getting more of an idea of Grimshaw in that exchange with Mary Beth than we are about Mary Beth. That Miss Grimshaw had an, an identity built around being attractive and desirable to people. And now that she's aged, and that's not necessarily the case anymore, she's struggling with that. And she is basically making that Mary Beth's problem. And instead of just sort of taking ownership of it, going like, yeah, that's part of it. So I got to divert my sense of self into other things. I'm not here to say that putting stock into vanity is a bad thing. I'm not, I'm not judging that in any way, shape, or form. What I'm saying, though, is that if you put a lot of stock into a thing that's temporary... You have to be ready for the reality that you will have to grieve the loss of that as time goes on. And time will start to seem like an enemy for you, if that's the case. Mary Beth. Hi. Yeah, Arthur ain't doing hot. At all. Hey, big man. I'm worried. I'm really worried. About what? Me 
Me too, Uncle. What's going to happen, you know? To everybody. <sighs> I guess folks is going to make a choice. Whether they live or die. And you? I don't have that choice no more. I'm just trying to help others see clearly. That's my choice. You're a good man, Arthur Morgan. A good man. Wow. Uh, first and foremost, that's the most vulnerable and serious conversation I think we've ever had with Uncle. There is a sense of melancholy around this camp. When people are presented with terminal illness like Arthur... Oftentimes their priorities shift and they ask themselves what I want to do with the time that I have left. Arthur's saying I want to help people make the right choice. I think at this point Arthur now is starting to realize loyalty to the group, loyalty to Dutch doesn't really matter so much anymore. What am I doing? And it's going to be interesting as people try to feel Arthur out here because this brings us back full circle to the conversations we had very early in this about implicit and explicit leadership. Arthur holds a very important role in this group. And he is going to start to represent possibly a polarization to Dutch. And we're going to see people approach him and ask how he's doing and what he thinks. I think because they're sensing that that's the case. Like Uncle there. Uncle says you're a good man. Well, we hear Uncle say a good man. That's going to start to possibly mean that Dutch is a bad man. Because the person that we're perceiving as good is questioning Dutch. Dutch is very likely to see that as a threat. Very likely to see that as a threat. And... We're going to have a lot of bullshit to deal with here. I am sure. So we got to watch out now. How do people... Because everybody watched us go against Dutch in the last episode. We didn't do that in isolation. We did the first couple in isolation. You okay? I guess. I didn't really know Molly so well. Thanks for your help. Well, securing this lovely spot. Well, don't give up on everything just yet. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, we are really... I, it would be hard not to be bummed out and in a bad state. See if we can get through a morning with no argument. How are you feeling about Molly? I'm feeling she got exactly what she deserved. That's what I figured. Okay. Yes, I'll leave you to it then. Yes, yes. I'm going to be annoying for a second. Miss Grimshaw did not give us a feeling. Something that you will notice a lot in your life, particularly if you're a therapist, is that if you ask people how they're feeling, they very rarely will actually give you an emotional word. Mostly to do that is vulnerable. Some people just don't have the language for it. She got what she deserved is a perception. It's a judgment. It's a cognition. It's a thought. It is not an emotional. Experience. A lot of times when people have a sense that somebody's coming at their emotional experience, they will give a thought as a way to put a barrier between that person and their emotional experience. It's one of the most common survival strategies you generally see for vulnerable. And Miss Grimshaw says that, and we are left from this conversation thinking to ourselves, yeah, but how do you feel? What is your actual emotional experience around it? You could, you could make sense of it that she got what she deserved, but like you still could be disappointed. You could be sad. You could be angry. You could be happy for all we know. When you are asked how you're feeling, or if you want to articulate how you're feeling, make sure that you actually say a feeling word to yourself before you even say it out loud. Remove the word like or that after the word feel and see how different what you say is. It's just an example right there of being asked directly what one's emotional experience is and she didn't answer. Now that's fine. It's her prerogative not to answer. I'm not suggesting that she should have, but it's a great opportunity for me to illustrate that point because we see it all the time. Guess that's that. Happy days. All we can do is move on. Anyway, I'll leave you to it. Whatever you uh, Shankzilla, thank you very much for becoming a supporter. 
I appreciate, or I always say supporter because that's what it says. But thank you for becoming a member. I really appreciate that, friend. You'll have 15 cool emotes to use here within the next week or so. Thank you very much for your support. I appreciate that a lot. What's up, Jack? Little man's seen a lot of shit. Must also suck to be the only kid in this area. You're gonna be okay, Jack. Can I go play in the caves? No. No. I ain't safe in there. All right, so Bill's over there. Mike is sitting at the table. Dutch reading at his tent. And one of the things that I think is important, too, is to look at the placement of where folks are. Susan? Someone smashed the box. What box? The money box. We'd had that for so many years. Why did they smash it? Well, I don't know. Look at this place. All divided. Everyone anxious and at each other's throats. I'm heartbroken. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Well, try to keep your head straight. Well, I suppose. So, here we are. Can't believe that bitch Molly ratted us out. Here you go. Here you go, though. This is a great example of how different people grieve differently. Molly was part of the group, okay? So we have a kind of a ride-or-die vibe in this group. Bill's pissed at her. That's okay. Bill gets to be mad at Molly. We don't all have to be sad that Molly's gone. He can be angry. It's okay. just as legitimate. Guess I'll see you later, then. Just sure, as legitimate. And if you find yourself judging Bill for the fact that he's angry at Molly and says that bitch deserved it, you got to check in with yourself and your own reactivity to that. Because, again, if we want people to support the way we grieve, we also have to understand and support the, re like the way that other folks grieve. And different people have different relationships and different perceptions. Of I'm going to be particularly interested in these two. Yeah, right, Sloppy? Hey, get up. Hope you're feeling okay, Morgan. Country. Yep. For man's desire, and not some gold world juju. Wasn't that a beautiful fantasia, Arthur? If you say so, Dutch. Such a beautiful dream. So poorly rendered. Huh. Okay. Guess I'll leave you to it then. Sure, Arthur. Hmm. Sit for a bit if you want. Uncle. What about the situations where their language is problematic like Bill's? I think it's okay to distance yourself from a person who's processing in a way you don't appreciate. I think that's fine, right? Like, if if, if Bill's going to go walk around saying that bitch, blah, 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 you can say, like, look, dude, I understand you're angry. That's totally okay. But, like, there's a time and a place. Or you remove yourself from the situation. Right? Like, you can't control other people's behavior. You can control your response to it, though. 
right, so we got Levi there, Edith Downs over there. We got a question mark up here. Sadie down here. I am inclined. All right, let's see what Le what, what Strauss has. If he's got more uh, shit for me to collect, I'm not doing it, but I do want to check in with him. Mr. Morgan. <laughs> Herr Strauss. How are you? About... About how I look. Okay. Are you, um... Are you perhaps available for some work? Debtors? Yes. I guess. Your commitment to your duties is admirable. <clears throat> you know, Mr. Morgan, you are... Well, I'm sorry for you. Hmm? No, never mind. I didn't... Look, Strauss. You take care. I ain't dead yet. No, of course not. That's what I was saying. I... Uh... I... A debtor, Strauss. Who owes you money? Well, uh, there's a deserter from Fort Wallace. Head to him first. They're looking for him out on the road near Three Sisters. Man's name is J. John Weathers. J. John Weathers. Then there's a miner over in Annisburg. He's called... Well, he's called Arthur. <laughs> like you. Huh. <laughs> Arthur Londonderry. Family man, desperate, you know the type. Couldn't one of the boys do this? I tried. They lacked your... vigor. Vigor, huh? huh. All right. Uh, take care, uh, uh, Mr. Morgan. Ain't doing it, Strauss. Also, I want to just take a second to acknowledge I am aware that there are folks that are bummed out or frustrated that I'm not doing Strauss's missions. I'm not gonna do it. I just don't. Arthur ain't into it. I ain't into it. If Strauss needs him done that badly, he can go find somebody else to do it. I'm just, I'm not interested in doing it. Arthur doesn't want to do it. So, we ain't gonna do it. There are many, many playthroughs on youtube of red dead that if you want to see what happens in those you can find them there but i i have no intention of doing them i do however want to go up here and talk to whoever this is so let's go do that you okay Now, I don't, I can't tell if the camp actually knows, and I don't need people to tell me this, but I can't tell if the camp actually knows whether Arthur has tubercul tuberculosis or not. If everybody's just kind of assuming he's a little bit sick. Give whiskey. <laughs> Here, have a drink, partner. Um, I got some uh, medicine. Medicina. Ya para qué? No puedo. Damn. Well, that sucks. You just watch that guy get mauled by a wolf. Might as well check. Uh... uh, probably not sloppy. To be completely honest with you. Once I finish this game, I'm done with this game for a while. Like this is, this game has taken a lot of energy to get through. So I, I don't really intend to watch other playthroughs of it when I finish it. 
That was a wolf. That wasn't even Crucifer. That was that was a wolf. Fitta, good to see you. Oh no! Hey, you could at least say you're sorry. Hey. Oh no! Oh. Hold up. There's some kind of issue. Never mind, asshole. Come on. Come on, Sinead. We got bad luck, don't we, girl? There, girl. Seek salvation. And maybe you shall find peace. Hey, this guy again. Help a blind man. A dollar. For your future, a dollar for your fate. Guy reminds me of the Monty Python bridge guy. Have this. Jesus, unbelievable. Be warned, sir. Do not slumber too deeply, for the man with no nose is coming for you. All right. Well, I'll have to take your word for it. Man with no nose is coming for you. Please, I need to be alone with okay, my Okay, girl. Interesting. Yes, Voldemort is on his way. At it, folks. I got shit to get to. Excuse me, sir. I got a stranger to go talk to. We really ought to get this pelt off the back of Sinead. That thing's gotta be nasty as hell. Hey there, mister. I'm wearing the wrong hat, chat. How to buy me a new hat. New tuberculosis hat. Hat I always wanted, you know? Now that I don't got much time left and a lot of money to burn. Got no children to leave my money to. Why not treat myself? Alright, what do we got up here? Alright, whoa, girl. Here, how about a biscuit? Hey, 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 girl, hey, eat a little something, huh, huh, you're not yourself when you're hungry, you promised you'd never leave me, It's okay, ma'am. I don't mean you no harm. <laughs> well, it makes no difference now if if an outlaw or a wild animal doesn't get me starvation. Well, <laughs> we came out here from the city in search of a different life, something true, something real. All this squandering and indulgence, we wanted to strip it away, to find something authentic. <laughs> what a pair of fools. Is there a train station or a town I can take you to? No, I can't give up now. He, he wouldn't want that. I, I can't have it. I'm going to do this for you, Cal. 
Well, I'll, um, I'll leave you to it. Is there anything left for you to eat? Nothing. No, we didn't know the first thing about hunting. We couldn't even catch a darn mouse. If you need any poisonous berries, though, I'm a natural at finding those. Well, you ain't gonna last much longer out here if you don't know how to hunt. Come on. I'll show you. All right. But you better not try any funny business. You know, I may be weak, but I still know how to stand up for myself. Oh, I don't doubt it. Come on. Hey, if I was her, that would I'd be a little bit uh Tell me, freaked you by that too. An animal before? No, but then again, I haven't caught much of anything either. Well, you'll need to know how to do both if you're going to survive out here. I am all too aware. So where should we head for? Uh, let's try in the trees down there, near the river. What happens to your husband, if you don't mind me asking? A bear got him. It was horrifying. He survived, but only for a couple of days. I, I buried him a week ago. Ugh. I'm sorry. This was really his dream more than mine. I'd have hopped the next train back to Chicago if he'd said the word. But now, I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I have to do this. Uh, I understand. It's interesting always to me in grief when people have a sense that there's a legacy that they have to live out on behalf for? of the person that died that somehow that person's conviction is something that needs to lead to uh, live on post their death. And I, I think that's totally okay. Like, I don't have anything against that. I'm not trying to suggest that this woman shouldn't be trying to get some internal closure or feel like she you know, made good on whatever promise they had as a couple. Like, that's super meaningful. I mean, hell, the entire premise of the movie Up is based on that. I do think, though, that it is also important for people to understand that that is a choice. And that if that decision starts leading to problems, you can bail. It's okay. Putting yourself in danger or putting yourself in a not-so-great situation because of something you think you're supposed to do... It's very important to remember that the reason this woman thinks that she needs to do this after her husband died is because she is the one that has drummed that up and decided that. He's not actually here to say that to her. So she has created that internally. And that's a reality that sometimes is hard for people to sit with, right? Because we carry that internal object idealized version of that person in death and in grief. But he's not actually sitting here watching her where he's going to magically have a conversation with her in her head where, like, she's met his approval or she's done good on it. So as long as this is fulfilling for her and meaningful and important, that's awesome. If this is part of her grief process, that's fabulous. It starts to cause problems, and she starts to really build this narrative that she can't get out of this because of that. It's time to remind her that she's the one that's holding on to that version of him and that she doesn't have to act on that at all. Amazing how often people do this. And it's something I think that many of us can connect with, particularly if we've lost something important to us. Ever played any of the Red Dead story? Would you recommend it? Sure. I mean, hell, this is my 28th episode playing it. I've enjoyed it a lot. But it depends on what kind of games you like. Yes. This is a good spot. What are we looking for? Well, I think we should start with something small, don't you? I kill it, you skin it. Sound fair? Skin it? But I, I, I don't even have a knife with me. Well, don't worry, you won't need one. Now, take a look around for any movement. I, I don't see anything. Shh, 
Just keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh partially Ryan's pet peeve, so I gotta own that up front. immediate defeatism and in in like outward incompetence is a coping mechanism and it's a very frustrating one this woman has already decided that she can't do this and as a result is already just immediately jumping to i don't see anything so ah. learning a new skill is going to make you anxious. Anxiety is part of the learning process. Very important as a result when you're learning a new skill to understand the general coping mechanisms you have to anxiety. For this woman, it's just outward defeatism immediately. I don't have a knife. I can't see anything. Like, lady, we've been out here for five seconds. So we're seeing her low distress tolerance in the context of needing to learn a new skill. She's got to build that distress tolerance. And Arthur is scaffolding that a little bit by saying, all right, no, hold on, stay low, stay quiet, stay here. We're going to look. It would be very frustrating as a teacher to interact with folks that do this. And if you are somebody that does this, it's, I think it's really important to recognize that that's an anxiety coping mechanism more often than not than it is a reality that you can't do something. She's doing that as a method to either avoid the task completely or to seek excessive reassurance from Arthur. And neither one of those is good for the anxiety. So make sure that you understand whether it's an actual reflection of incompetence or if it's just anxiety mitigation protocol. And if you actually want to learn a new skill, you're going to have to sit in the discomfort of that. It's part of the process. Hassam, good to have you in here. And I appreciate you saying that, friend. So we can help this woman. I'm not saying that we have to just shove her off a cliff and tell her to figure it out on her own. But also, like... Got to learn how to do it. Damn, huh? Look, rabbit. Okay, stay quiet and still. Watch me. Oh no, it's hopping away. I don't have my bow and arrow. And I'm pretty sure a lasso ain't gonna work on a bunny. But this is gonna blow it up. What do I do? Just hold the legs tight and pull the skin away quickly. Should come right off. Oh! <laughs> it worked. That is all there is to it. You did good. I think I've seen enough blood for one day. <laughs> Do you mind if we head back now? Sure. I'll walk you back. You did good. Is that, that true? You fed for a few days. Oh, yeah. Is that really how it works? Thank you so much. I mean, it really ain't such a bad spot. You got a good water source. It's remote, but you can survive here all right. I have no doubt that one can survive here. 
Whether Charlotte Balfour can is a different matter entirely. Charlotte Balfour? You've probably lived your whole life in the outdoors. Oh, a lot of it, that's for sure. I barely left the city before coming here. Cal spent his summers growing up at his grandparents' lodge in Maine, but I get the impression they did more punting than hunting. Right. Really? Wow. I just, I mean, I don't hunt, so I don't know much about. Oh, Lord. No. Oh, hell no. We're done for now. Wolves, stay back. Just a smell of dead rabbit. See, okay, I one minor complaint about this game. I don't like situations like this where the game essentially forces you to use um dead eye. It's so annoying to me. God damn it. Like that many bullets in that thing, I would have thought would at least like scare it off. It's so annoying. Do I gotta redo this? Please tell me I don't have to redo this because I freaking died from a wolf. I'm gonna be so mad. You gotta be kidding me. This was supposed to be our little adventure. Uh, are you kidding? Who are you? Oh, it, it's okay, ma'am. I don't mean you no harm. <laughs> well, it makes no difference now. Oh my god. If an outlaw or a wild animal doesn't get me starving. Alright, whatever. We're gonna do this quick, but I'm gonna Tell this me, time. You ever skin an animal before? Jenna! No, but. Then again, I haven't caught much of anything either. Well, you'll need to know how to do both if you're gonna survive out here. I am all too aware. So where should we head for? Uh... Uh, let's try in the trees down there, near the river. What happened to your husband, if you don't mind me asking? A bear got him. No, it didn't give me an option, Ellie. I literally had no option. It just went black screen and reloaded it. Normally, I know that there's the option to restart uh, checkpoint, but it didn't give me a I'm checkpoint. Sorry. This was really his dream more than mine. I'd have hopped the next train back to Chicago if he said the word. But now, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I have to do this. Uh, it's fine. Whatever. We'll do this quickly. Yeah. This is a good I'll spot. Get it done with. What are we looking for? Well, I think we should start with something small, don't oh, you? Oh, how about a moose? I kill it, you skin it. Oh, I want to kill the moose. But I, I, I didn't know there were moose in this game. Well, don't worry, you won't need one. No. There. Look. Crap. Oh. oh. Got it. Oh. Good shot. Okay then, go on. Time to get your hands dirty. How do I... I mean... What do I do? Just hold the legs tight and pull the skin away quickly. Should I want that right moose. Off. Can't believe that thing was just chilling there. Oh my... <laughs> it worked. That... All right, I'm ready for I'm ready for some wolves now. I think I've seen enough. Ain't gonna be messing day. with me here. Mind if we head back now. Sure, I'll walk you back. You did good. That should keep you fed for a few days. Oh, Want to yeah. find that moose? At least. Thank you so much. 
I mean, this really ain't such a bad spot. You got a good water source. It's remote, but you can survive here all right. I have no doubt that one can survive here. Whether Charlotte Balfour can is a different matter entirely. You've probably lived your whole life in the outdoors. Oh, a lot of it, that's for sure. Man, you guys ever experienced deja vu? Cal spent his summers growing up at his grandparents' Man, you guys ever experienced deja vu? I get the impression they did more punting than hunting. Right. Man, you guys ever experienced deja vu? Come here, you little bitch. No, we're done for now. Come on. Come on. Stay back. Come on. Just smell the dead rabbit. Do something, please. Need nothing but a bitch now. No. You got a rifle? Yes. Well, my my husband's. I suggest you learn how to use it. Now, come on, let's get you home. Since we got here, it feels like every step forward has come with a hundred steps back. People always talk about the simplicity of country life, but there is nothing simple about any of this. Uh. I guess we only know what we know. Oh, please. I'm sure it wouldn't take you too long to adjust to a life of privilege and indolence in the big city. I don't know about that. It sounds off. Oh, it is. A truly empty and boring existence. But an undeniably easy one. I still can't believe he's gone. Stop commenting on this street skinning a rabbit video was look this up because of Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> I'm ready for anything now. I just didn't think to do it, Ethan. I don't generally like using pistols. Anyway. Well, you got a nice house here, man. Thank you. That was the first time anyone's done anything nice for us. For me. Since we got here. Nature provides, but she sure don't always make it easy. That she doesn't. I'd invite you in, but I'm dead on my feet, if you'll forgive the pun. <laughs> Please do call again sometime, though. A good rest, and... Hopefully I'll be a new woman. You take care, man. The women in this game are badass, man. All right, well, that was nice. Right, look at all this area that I just never even explored. Holy hell. Okay. Uh, let's go see what Edith, Edith Downs got for us on our way back down to Sadie. Hopefully we get there by nightfall. I imagine we will. Howdy, fellas. Out of the damn way. See you later. Easy there. The wolves were ruined. I used a shotgun to kill them, so the pelts were no good. But yes, normally you could if I would have actually, you know, shot them the right way. Oh girl, come on! Let's see what's in this house. Let's see what 
us in here. This is a pretty nicely put together place. Sketched map. Ansberg, Elysian Pool, 20 steps north, 5 steps east. Interesting. Treasure map's probably all that was important it's in here anyway. Alright. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Got ourselves a map. Beautiful evening here. This is supposed to be like West Virginia ish area. What tarnation? I said, hell, even a blind hog finds an acorn every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Company boys? Evening. Sure, because I want to be pissing needles tomorrow. <laughs> right, where's she at? I, I think she's a sex worker now. Eat it downs. How do you do? This is down. Go away. Just go away. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry, but I... Well... Well, you're sorry. Yeah, I heard you. But... I mean... Well, I... I this country... Is man unleashed? That's the thing, and it ain't my fault any more than is man anyone else. Man unleashed? Then unleash goodness, not just hell's feeble brothers, sir. But how? I mean, all I know how to do is fight. Guess I was set free to fight. Where's your son, Mrs. Down? Oh, where you think? Down the mine until he gets sick, which won't be long, given how hard they work him. See. Foreman don't like him, so he gets the worst of it. Maybe I could go. Well, maybe you could just leave us all alone. Maybe. Maybe you could just go fight some other battle. Fuck boundaries. Let's go to the mine. Extra, extra, right here. What you looking for? A paper? Thanks. Have a great day. I was gonna take a bath, but something tells me taking a bath before I go down in the mine is going down in the mine is probably not the greatest idea. So we're just gonna go down in the mine, all dirty like. Can't imagine, you know, a little coal, rub a little coal in the lungs is good for the TB. Rub a little coal. Oh, your mom's a whore, and that's a goddamn fact. Hey, you probably slept hey, with her too, you dickwad. Why don't you shut up? 
Who's this, your daddy? My daddy died. And this man, he killed him. What are you doing here? Leave the boy alone. Why'd you kill his daddy? You after his mama? <laughs> Stop bullying the boy. Get out of my business, mister. Leave the boy alone. Or what? Or I'll kill you too. You couldn't kill no one. Look at you, all ragged and sick and weak. Clear off, you goddamn hermit. Clear off! You and the horse son here. Can't even fight your own battles, Downs? Get off me! I say what goes round. He's wolf his axe. Let the boy go. Let him go! Come on, me. Shame on you. He's just a goddamn boy! Let's get you out of here. But they're gonna kill me. Now I got no job, and they're gonna kill me. I've got some money. You and your mama can go someplace nice. Well, why are you doing this? I don't know. Listen, take this, all of it. Try and talk to your mama, and get out of here. Now run. I'll try. Good boy. I don't want to see you here again. You're atoning for your sins, eh, Arthur? So he feels bad about the fact that he killed this father. And he's coming back to atone. Alright, Arthur. I see you. That's the way you gotta do it, though, because the kid was right. If we just walk out of there, that kid's screwed. So, hey. I mean, he can't make it right, right? Like, he can't bring the guy's dad back, but if he can get him out of that situation, that's not too bad. Where'd they go? So, wait, who's this? So, Marco Drag. Oh, wow. This guy. We haven't talked to him in forever. Oh, Marco. And then we got Henry, Le Henry Lemieux, because it's nighttime. Sadie over here. Oh, man. All right. Well, I reckon we're real close to Marco. So, let's go, let's go hit up Marco. See what my man's got here. Kind of nice to do some side stuff, given how uh, heavy everything's been. A little night ride. We'll camp out outside Marco, hit him up in the morning. Yeah, your boy Arthur's got money to give. So if we're going to use it for good, works for me. You know, Arthur, you know, as we ride this out here, you know, in the journal, Arthur's talked about feeling this sense of a good part of him and a bad part of him. For a long time, as we've talked about, he's been kind of overriding the good by telling himself he's bad. I wonder if the impending sense of death for him is forcing him to reconcile himself. And basically say, okay, so you know what? I'm presented with a choice here at any given moment. I can act on what I would consider to be good or what I consider to be bad. The overriding of my narrative to be a bad person is a decision that I'm making, and I don't need to make that decision. I can legitimately do things that are good for folks. I think in some ways he does it because there's guilt that he's created from the sense that he's a bad person. But you would hope that as he does new things like that, maybe he finds it in himself to start saying some nicer shit to himself. Like, hey, you know what, man? Even though you've done some stuff you regret, you can do some stuff that when the ultimate day comes and you got to lay it down for the last time, you can say at least you made good on the rest of your life. Acted on that part of yourself that you stuck for a long time. And I really think that's a meaningful journey that a person can go through. And it's a lonely journey sometimes, and we're feeling that right now. Arthur's all by himself. But you can do it for you. The you know, thing is, like, you don't have to do everything for other people. You can do stuff for yourself. Damn folk, don't leave me the hell alone. Okay, then. I've 
Oh shit! My internal caveman is just like freaking out right now. Holy shit. Look at that. I know, girl. Just give me a second. Wow. Awesome.
All right. That was really, what a cool moment that was, man. You do that in the rain? Holy cow. Uh, well, now I guess I'm a little bit like, I don't know. I want to take it to, uh, like a skinning person. Cause I want to get, I want to get the stuff that I can get from that. Right? Like, can't I take it to this trapper guy and get like a ton of money? I suppose I could probably do that and then I'm going to go down to Saint Denis, I think. I'm going to go take a train. We're going to we're going to go to Ansberg. We're going to take a train to Saint Denis. Well, no, we can't. We're going to go All right, we're going to night ride to Saint Denis. And uh we're going to go to the trapper cuz I want to see what I can get from him. So, we're going to do a night ride down to Saint Denis. We'll take a train up to Ansberg. And then we'll keep rolling. We're just going to enjoy the storm. Alright, let's do it. Ain't got time for you, sir. Is there a trapper close to me? I don't... Cause I don't think there's a trapper in town here. I don't see one. Oh, wait a minute. Here's one. Okay. We'll go to that guy then. Yeah, if I can avoid Saint Denis, that's probably better anyway. Yeah, what a cool ambiance. I big hate these guys. These, these guys. Oh, shit. Nope. Just keep going. Keep going, girl. You're faster. You're faster than the wolves. Keep going. Oh, my God. And Crucifer. No. No. No, 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 no. This pelt is getting to the fur trader. Whether Crucifer wants to stop us or not. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. We will not live in fear. We will not live in fear. Holy shit. Coming down in sheets. I keep hearing the doors in my... No! Keep it going, girl. Keep it going, girl. We ain't messing around with any of them wild animals. Oh, wow. Look at that. Can we just take a second to appreciate this storm with Saint Denis in the background like that? What a hell of a shot this is.
And chat, why don't we just watch a lovely sunrise while we're at it, huh? We're just gonna take this in for a second, because this is amazing. If this was real life, I'd be stopping right here and just taking this in. Storm clears. Sun's coming up. We've had a we've had a rough go at it. Man. What is that? I want to know what that is. Chad, I would like to use this moment to thank you for being here. I appreciate all of you hanging out with me for these streams. I love interacting with you while we play this and that you're here to watch this live with me and just enjoy how incredible these moments are. Those of you that watch the VOD, you're watching it right now thank you so much for being here and supporting the stream that way uh, i know that some of you become members or you'll you'll sub while i'm not online to say thank you so i just want to say thank you for doing that make sure you leave a comment i love reading them i don't respond to all of them but i do read them um, just overall i'm really grateful for everybody being a part of this community and you know interacting with it in whatever ways you do and uh, I hope that you will continue to support the channel no matter what we play in the future. This has been a really a lot of fun. So, to the members, uh, thank you. And uh, this will always be free for you to access. I hope that you learn a little something when you play these games with me. I hope that my analysis adds something to, you, to it. Uh, I understand why people love this game. It's really fabulous. Whether you chat, lurk, watch the VODs, however it is you consume my content, I appreciate it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and TikTok and all that too. TikTok will have a curated version of all of the moments, or some of the moments, of uh, the analysis and stuff. So, a lot of good stuff coming down the line here. The storm was super badass clearing of it, watching the sunrise. I mean, come on. And now we get to see what I get to make from this new spell. Would you look at this pale old brute? Must have found him up north, right? 
So, what do you have for me? Quality hide makes the hardiest clothes around. Don't doubt it. All right, now the question is, how do I make sure I don't screw this up? Do I sell the pelt to him? Dude, I want this hat so bad. I can't even tell you. I want this hat so bad. I got to get beaver. Sell it to him first, then he can craft it. Okay. All right, let's have a look. It can be sold and used for crafting. Okay, so let's sell it. Oh, I'd pay just about any price for this. Oh, you paid me $35, so... Okay. All made to measure. So now... No trouble. Ooh. I like that better. I like that better. the hell can I make with it? Bucks have it easy down here in the south. I once tracked a bad tempered okay, moose so four days across an ice sheet okay. just to eat a square. Well, meat. I got a new holster, so that's cool. Regardless, thanks, partner. Mind if I litter right in front of you, partner? Venison. Let's uh, let's feed Jen A, and then let's get out of here. Yeah, you're all right, girl. In one of the sets, okay. All right, that's cool. I'm still I'm still glad we did that. That was really badass. Apparently, I can only talk to that guy at night. I really hope it's not only when it's storming. That's gonna. That's gonna bum me out. <laughs> yep. 
All right, let's go. Let's get out of here. that moose was actually really exhilarating like seeing it up on the mountain like that it's like damn hey i wouldn't waste your time paying in this stretch this here's all shit <laughs> and no shine well Hope you find some shine. I'll leave you to it. Hey, this here's my spot. Go claim your own. All right, all right. Oh my God. Love that man's horse. Girl. That's a really, really badass horse. Come on, I can feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Woo, yeah, here we go. I ain't gonna rob him. I'm gonna let that man just have his fun. Dude's working hard trying to get gold. Who am I to take that away from him? Everybody doing on bingo anybody close to a bingo don't tell me what you need for the bingo but anybody close See if they got out of here. Hello. Hello. Howdy, sir. This must be your first time. Everything is here in the catalog. Just make a selection, and I can bring it out for you to inspect. Ah, you have kept that perfectly maintained. I love to see that. You've kept that weapon looking as nice as the day you bought it. Well done. Yes, yeah, sir. Ah, just, you have kept that. You know, when you got a lot of money to blow, I love you have people clean your shit that. for you. You've kept yeah. that weapon looking as nice as the day you bought it. Well done. Ah, you have kept that perfectly maintained. I love to ah, see that. I love that you keep saying the same thing over and You've over again. You've kept that weapon looking as nice as the day you bought it. Well done. Ah, you have kept that perfectly maintained. I love to see that. I could put some excellent engraving on this, if you're interested. I am interested.
sudden. All the weapons here are regularly maintained and clean. The coal dust gets on everything. Alright. Thank you, sir. I hear there was a big shootout with the Murphy. Just come back if you need anything. Okay. Hey, uh, Step you up, ever man, experienced right? deja vu before? Oh yeah. Have you? Mr. Morgan. You still here, kid? Yes. Mama. Mama can't leave. It won't leave. I I don't know. I said I had the money. It, she said your money weren't moral. She said it'd be better <laughs> to die than to take it. <laughs> Maybe she's right. I don't know. I don't know anything about morals. She's still heading out. Working, you know? I'm sorry, son. <gasps> sorry about all of this. Look, she ain't been back for a few hours. She left with some fellow down the railway tracks. I did not like the look of him. Which way, you say? Uh, that way. Around the woods, towards, uh, Willard's Rest. I'll see what I can do. Hey, there. hey you good? Creep her down the line. Come on, Jenny. Come on, girl. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> My money's amoral, huh? Even though I helped your son out. I get why she'd have a grudge on me. I really do. That's enough now, partner. Oh, no. You're starting to scare me, let alone the poor woman. Clear off. Who are you? Someone who don't want to hear no more of your nasty mouth. Push me. I'll put a bullet in you. I, I presume Archie sent you? I said clear off before I deal with you. I'll see you again, dearie. <sighs> Listen. Listen to me. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. You sound like my husband. <laughs> yeah, I got it from him. I know. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what happened. I was uh, a fool. And I'm suffering from my foolishness. But. Before he even goes any further. Arthur, you are not a victim in the eyes of this woman. You are not a tragic victim. You suffering for your foolishness ain't going to do nothing for her. You killed her husband. Okay? There is such a tendency when people feel guilt or when people have a guilt narrative for something that they have done. And there are people that were proximal to the person that they've loaded all of that guilt into. 
there is a tendency to seek reassurance from the from either the person or the people around you for that guilt for her to say to him hey it's okay what you did and it ain't her job to do that so Arthur presenting this as if somehow he's an empathic figure for her just totally misses the mark. If you mess up, if you hurt somebody, own it. Don't make your emotional experience and guilt about it their problem. I punch you in the face and then expect you to feel bad for me because I feel bad that I punched you in the face. It's a ridiculous bind to put you in. But don't like that that's Arthur's approach here. And it's mostly for illustrative purposes to say, don't do what Arthur's doing right now. It's not fair. Arthur hurt this woman. He needs to acknowledge it and approach her from that position, not one of being some kind of tragic figure. Don't go and get yourself killed because of your pride. You have a son, Mrs. Downs. I'm just so ashamed. Ashamed? <laughs> of what? <laughs> you loved him. <laughs> you did everything for him. <laughs> Let's get you home. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Come on. I think Arthur thinks that him telling her he's suffering might make her feel as if she's getting what he deserves. It certainly could be the case. Yeah. I'm sorry it had to come to this. Stop saying sorry. Sorry won't bring Thomas back. I know. <laughs> right there though, right? It doesn't it doesn't actually bring him back. Like Arthur's suffering isn't it's not a one to one thing. You know, if this woman says, I hope you're suffering, then he could certainly say, I am. But for him to present it on offhandedly like that, I just, it's not, it's not a useful tactic. It's, it's a passive form of communication, right? He says, I'm sorry for what happened. She says, I don't fucking care if you're sorry. My husband's dead. I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care if you're suffering for it. I lost my husband. My husband's death is more important to me than your well-being, whether it's good or bad, right? Which is why I just don't like that tactic. So you're sick now too? And you think that affords you the opportunity for penance for cutting his time short? No, I ain't looking for that. Okay then. So just forget about me and the guilt you're carrying because no good can come of that for either of us. And all you can do now is decide the man you want to be for the time you have left. Help someone who can still be helped. Or help yourself. I suppose you're right. Oh, hang yourself for all I care. You're right to dislike me. I ain't looking for that to change. Yep. I will say that I'm glad I'm glad that Arthur's doing this. At the same time, Arthur does have to be careful. Like Arthur's atonement could protect, could put these people in danger. Ahead. And then that all of a sudden that kind of misses the mark too, right? Like if Arthur gets Archie in big trouble and those guys come after him and kill him, if you know, she gets hurt or something, like now what are you doing? Because you felt terrible. You're gonna like you're gonna get other people in trouble because you feel bad. Mama! Mama! Oh, oh. Oh, oh. You're a silly boy. Oh, Archie, what oh, we do? Get out of here. Go live someplace else. Start over. Here, take this. More money. I don't need it no more. I don't want your money. Yeah, I know you don't want it. 
I don't. You sure as shit need it. Take it. No. I ain't looking for forgiveness. It ain't about that. But don't forgive me. Just take the money and get out of here. Please. I know I ruined your life. I suffer for it every day. But don't let yourself get killed for, for pride. I seen it kill too many folk. You killed Dutch. <sighs> don't say anything. Don't thank me. Just take the money and pack your bags. That's all I gotta say. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. I said don't thank me. Get out of here. Please. I respect that. I respect that. How are you? You know that that is Arthur. Oh. That's that's Arthur doing it as well as you can do it. This ain't about me. This ain't about my need of reassurance from you. Like I, 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 you know, in some ways, I guess I will, I will walk back what I said a little bit because of seeing this end resolution. I still stand by him sharing that with her as I don't believe is particularly useful, but the way that he resolved this in saying this ain't about me, I don't need you to forgive me. I'm not making this about myself. I'm legitimately making this about you and about your well-being because i know i ruined your life and i don't expect atonement or reassurance from you that's awesome that is arthur kind of going as altruistic about this as he possibly can it's him acknowledging that they were the ones that were affected by this that's cool i'm all for that right him saying stuff like i beat myself up every day for it well that's for arthur to figure out that ain't for them to have to worry about or deal with or feel bad about but him him helping them out in that way and don't even attach meaning to it that has to do with me. Cool. She still could have refused it. She could throw it away. And that's her prerogative. But good for him, right? This is the same energy as... Um, this is the same energy as a person who, you know, goes to a soup kitchen or, you know, hands a, hands a person on the street 15 bucks or you know does something nice for somebody and just keeps it to themselves doesn't make it about anything other than that moment right arthur isn't going to go post this shit to instagram he's not going to go tweet about it and say hey everybody look at me oh ye benevolent awesome person who does x thing every so often because blah 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 look at me look at me making it about self indulgence and reassurance this is Arthur saying, you know what? I did a good thing because I know that that's the right thing to do. That's what feels right for me. I want to make sure that these folks are taken care of as best as I can take care of them. And then I'm going to go on about my day and not expect anything from them. That, to me, is the way you do it. All right. And I'll bet you anything, Arthur ain't going to tell anybody that he's done that. He's not, Arthur's not about to just go run back and say, Hey, everybody at camp, look at all the nice shit I did.
doing is posting doing nice things to social media really that bad? I didn't say it's bad. I just think that if you're if you're if you're like at the end of the day, you still did a nice thing. To me, I mean, this is more of a personal opinion. I don't really care if people agree with it or not, but like in my opinion, if I go up to a person who is hungry and let's say I buy some extra food at a restaurant that I'm at and I hand that pizza to somebody who's homeless, who's really hungry and wants food. If I immediately take a selfie of that or take a video of it and then post it to social media, I'm using that person's struggle for social karma. That feels gross to me. It feels gross. Like, I, I prefer the human interaction of that. So, like, you're hungry. I can afford some extra food. I'm giving you the food because, that, to me, that's the right thing to do because I'm looking out for my fellow human. If somebody passing by sees it and says, hey, that was really cool that you did that, that's cool, right? But, like, exploiting people who are struggling for your own social capital... I, I just like if I'm homeless on the side of the side of the road and like if I if I'm struggling immensely and somebody's using my struggle for their own personal gain so they can get followers on Twitter, like I'm not I'm just not into it. I'm really not. Like it would be kinda like I don't know, it, it just it would be like me saying I'm super excited because like, you know, look at me, I'm I'm helping a, a client who's struggling with the worst case of ptsd i've ever seen in my life let's show that off like that feels gross to me so i, I to me i just you know if you do that cool it's your prerogative but i'm certainly like i just i'm not into it i, I just it feels really feels really gross um so uh i'm also gonna hey lotus you did backseat not really negotiable. If you continue to give mods a hard time, I'm going to you're going to get banned. Like I'm I'm kind of tired of seeing messages get removed by mods because of stuff that you're saying. You telling me to go clean my guns is absolutely backseating. One of there's two rules here, no spoilers, no backseating. You do it again, you're out cuz we've been pretty lenient up until this point. So, I'm just going to be very clear about that right now. And also, those of you that put comments on the videos, too, I do appreciate if you don't backseat or post spoilers in comments because I will remove those comments as well. Uh, mods are doing the best they can. Don't fight with my mods. Mods win every time. bed in a bath here or actually well actually no we're about to probably do some crazy shit for sadie and marston so let's just keep going I keep avoiding a bath because i keep having to do some dumb stuff i understand that i'm supposed to clean my guns sometimes i don't do it because i don't think to do it like <laughs> it just <laughs> again i i i do not enjoy being told what to do I ask for reminders when I want them, but... <laughs> if I'm going to shoot dirty guns and die, I'm going to shoot dirty guns and die. I'll learn eventually. <laughs> you ever experienced deja vu, chat? You ever experienced deja vu, chat? You ever experienced deja vu, chat? Still 
generally not. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sadie. To the task at hand. Let's go get John Marston. This is gonna piss Dutch off. I know it is. I know it ain't gonna go well. I know it ain't gonna go well. Easy. Whoa. Thing is, Sadie, I really can't. I must come. He's my husband. I yeah, know he's your husband, but it's gonna be. Well, it's gonna be violent. I'm gonna just pick these flowers while y'all talk. I can handle myself just fine. I'm coming. Like I said, ain't happening. You got a boy. I get why she wants to come, but I, to me, to me, Abigail coming on this journey is more of a liability, and that's not, not personal. I just. I don't know if Abigail knows how to fight. I know Sadie knows how to fight, but this is going to be crazy. We're going to a maximum security prison here, Abigail. I understand the emotional investment, but you got... So here's... Okay, so here's the thing in game planning this. It is... It is... A liability at times to bring somebody along who is emotionally invested in something beyond what we would consider to be the normal range. Abigail, I think falls into this category at this point. First of all, she's kind of an unknown quantity for us because uh, I haven't had a bunch of interactions with her. There is potential that she could be in trouble. Also, when people are overly emotionally involved in something and have not built in cognitive overrides for it, they will sometimes make really poor decisions and react to the emotional experience in the moment, particularly when there's significant adversity and uh, pressure. We can't afford that on this trip. Abigail could very well get me and Sadie killed. Or if Abigail dies, then what happens with Jack? So Abigail, by even being here, talking to Sadie about going on this trip, tells me she is not a full sound mind and body because Jack is her responsibility. And it's not good for him if she goes. This is part of the burden of being a parent. You don't just get to do anything you want to do at any given point in time because you chose to have a child. So her going here is red flag city, and I am hopeful that maybe Sadie and I can talk her out of it. Leaders got to make tough decisions. And in this case, I see Sadie and I as having to make a tough decision. I insist. Too bad. Insist all you like. Ain't happening. Arthur Taylor. Tell her what? She ain't coming with us to collect her husband. I... Abigail, you ain't coming. That's the end of the matter. See, there you heard him. Now let's go. But, but nothing. It'll be quicker and easier with just the two of us. Plus, John will be calmer without worrying about you. Ain't that complicated. Too. Well, why ain't the crime sort, but... I'm real grateful. We know you are. <laughs> we'll bring him back to you. Thank you. Thank you both. I don't think so, Sloppy. Right. Not at this point. Nothing. Oh, boy. The place is surrounded by marshland. Should hopefully give us a bit of cover to move in close enough to find a spot and look for John. This time of day, prisoners will probably be working the fields. Then all we gotta do is take out all the guards and row our way out of there. Seems simple enough. How many times, Marston? Ooh, baby. How's this gonna go? Okay, bring us over. We good? Uh. Let's head for that. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I don't have a scoped rifle. Okay. Oh Come on. I need a scope. I should have thought of that. I should have thought of that before we did this. Son of a bitch.
Nope, we gotta deal with it, Kiwi. You live with your decisions. Life don't give me redos. I ain't doing a redo here. I gotta live with my decision. If I die, I can change it, but we're gonna make do with our rifles here. The shitty ass rifle on my back and the awesome one I'm holding. This is pain, baby. I'm coming, Sadie. How did they not see a boat coming across the river? He's the worst guards ever. Oh, hey, don't mind that. Don't mind that thing that's rippling all the water coming in our direction in plain daylight. <laughs> Should have done this at night. What are you waiting for? Sadie, I gotta be quiet. Chill. <laughs> All right, sir. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Come on up. You got a sniper? Sir? No? All right, where's John? Good question, Sadie. Let's go see if I can find myself a John. Hey, I think I see him. There's a group in front of that barn, just to our right. Oh, yeah, I see two guards. Okay, take them out and let's go get our boy. Okay. Oh, I wish I had a scope. I really wish I had a scope. This got decent range. This has, does it have better range? Take the shot, Arthur. Hey, look at this. Hey, you're in the way. Okie dokie. All right, I got a plan for this. I got a plan. Okay, come on. I think one of those guards was still moving. Oh, shit. Moving. Where is he? You see him? No. You, Mister. You know John Marsden? I, he ain't. He ain't working today. Put the gun down, lady. No. You put the gun down. Now. <laughs> Where's John Marston? Uh, uh, he ain't in the work detail today. Okay, well, I guess we'll go and get him together. Try anything, I'll blow your damn head off. You clear on that? Yes, very clear. Oh, no, you don't. Hell yeah, let's go. Come on, partner. <clears throat> Why don't you apologize to the lady for pointing a gun at her? Excuse me? I said apologize. I'm sorry, ma'am. Ain't no harm done. So, where do we go? Towards the entrance, I guess. And who's in charge of this fine establishment? Jameson, ah. sir. Jameson who? No, Mr. Jameson. Ah. Heston Jameson. Uh, is he a nice fella? Uh... He's been quite an exacting boss at times. I look forward to meeting him. They're... they're not gonna let you do this. Well, that's gonna be up to you, my friend. 
Weird how those guys just let Sadie knock him out. Like, that guy watched her knock that dude out. He had to have known that was coming. Why wouldn't you at least try? Please. So, you a popular employee, my friend? Not especially. Well, I guess we're about to find out. This is really a struggle to move this guy. Come on, march him straight up to the front gate. What do you think I'm doing, oh, Sadie? Someone in there actually gives a damn about this fool. Yeah, no shit. They can just scope me out real easy. We have to shoot our way out of here regardless. This is gonna, man, this is gonna be, this is just, ah, man. Oh, you guys! I don't know that this was it. This ain't gonna go well. Those guys could kill us immediately. There's like five of them. Oh God! Take the shot. Okay, friend, be cool now. Just Sadie is. Do as I say. Jesus. Sadie, there's like seven of them. What are you doing? They could drop her. Jameson! Is Jameson in? Get He's behind me. me. They got Milliken. Got him and gonna kill him. Unless you bring me John Marston right now. You got one minute. I'm counting. One, two, three. Uh, uh, Milliken, uh, is it? Yes, sir. Will you count for me? I got talking to do. Uh, yes, sir. Of course I <laughs> From one or four? Oh, <laughs> fine. We must be at 11 by now. 11, 12. <laughs> Faster. 14, 15, 16, 17. Now hurry up. 18, well, this poor fool's gonna get his brain shot out. And over what? For nothing. Hey, Milliken, don't stop counting. I can't hear you. Now hurry up and bring that asshole out here, you bastards. Come on. Don't cry, buddy. I don't wanna die. Yeah, I know, I know. Hey, hey, John. Hello, you too. Now, no funny business for Mr. Medican here to stop crying once and for all. Okay, today's your lucky day. Let's go! Boy, I hope y'all are stormtroopers. Let's wait. Oh, God, really? Please, make a run for it! Oh my god! There's no way we survived this! More behind us! These are the most incompetent guards I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, don't go behind us. This is crazy.
we would never, we would never survive this. We would never survive this. Let's go. Let's clear these and make a run for it. Oh, my hat. Don't you take my hat, fellas. Oh, howdy. You all suck. Those guys were standing there for like 10 minutes while I was shooting up at the top. Strongest crate I've ever seen. Okay, go. God damn it. Come on, run. supposed to survive this More behind us Find some cover You Great time for some baked beans Maybe some Dauntless snacks. I'm in trouble. Yep, I'm so I'm so screwed. the boat is at this point there it is how are they not immediately on us you always seem to need rescue uh, nice to see you arthur uh, there's some fellas coming here don't look too friendly we best get out of here come on boys let's move i'll row you shoot seriously let me you you're a better shot. All right, fine. You just relax and enjoy yourself, John. Leave the real work to them as can still handle it. Thanks. <laughs> I love how John takes that seriously. Uh, I love Sadie admitting that John's a better shot. That's kind of cool. Unless she's just saying that to make him feel better. You literally have to suspend your disbelief there. That's that's absolutely insane. There's no reason why we would ever survive you know, that. I think I liked you better when you was all trussed up like a prize chicken. No <laughs> doubt. Oh, hurry up. They're going to be on our tail soon enough if you boys keep wasting time. Alligator Jesus on our side. Damn. 
Oh, hey, thank you so well. Thank you. Don't mention it. Let's go. We should get out of here quick before the law gets wind of this. Okay. So what the hell happened in San Denis? Is Abigail all right? She's fine. Jack is too. She managed to escape when they got Hosea. Hosea? That still don't seem real somehow. Okay, so I, I'm not... This is a little nitpicky. It's a little nitpicky, but... I also think that it's worth just pointing out. Because language is so important. Um, Arthur asks how Abigail's doing first. And I think that speaks to how non-ingrained Jack is in John's conceptualization of himself and his life. Because I think probably the majority of parents the first question they would ask is how their kid is. And I, I'm not, this isn't me being critical of John. It's just, it's just an interesting little piece of insight that he asks about Abigail before he asks about Jack. Because I, I, there's so many parents I know would be like desperate to know how their kid's doing. And then once they hear that the kid's fine, then they move on to the other relationship. So, you know, take it for what you will. You think Sadie pausing before saying Arthur is a better shot is because she might know Arthur isn't doing well and maybe she's concerned about him and doesn't want him rowing? I don't know if there's that much thought that would have gone into it in the moment. Um, and maybe, right? It may be that she actually thinks Arthur's a better shot. Maybe she's just trying to placate Arthur. Maybe she's trying to take care of him. It's hard to know. I, I don't know what her actual motivation there was, but it's interesting that she, you know, she says it to him. Oh. All them years. Did I leave him? No, Arthur. That happens. He was like a lot of names to keep track of. Like family. Yeah, we lost young Lenny too. No. What a goddamn mess. And did we? What about the the money? Lost oh, somewhere at the bottom of the ocean. What? How the hell did that happen? We hit on a boat. It's the only way out of there. The boat went down in a storm, and we ended up stranded on an island somewhere near Cuba. Cuba? Wait, you're gonna have to tell me all this again. It's a long story, but things ain't been good, John. <laughs> you're telling me. We're holed up now in the mountains to the north, near Roanoke Grids, and some caves there. The Pinkertons caught up with us again, and we had to move. Yeah. Seems Molly ratted us out, the bitch. So she's dead, too. Jesus. Maybe you should have just left me to hang. And, uh, I should warn you, Dutch didn't want us breaking you out. Said it wasn't the right time, so... Might not be the hero's welcome you're imagining. So much for no man left behind. I can't stop thinking about this. In the bank, when they grabbed me, he saw it. it felt almost like he had a, a moment to do something and didn't. Dutch ain't himself right now. Or maybe he just ain't who we thought he was. Guess we don't need to worry about who's his favorite no more. Huh. Guess not. Oh, baby. Here we go. We told you we would. John! What are you doing here? Good to see you too, partner. I meant I hadn't sent for you yet. I went. 
But I said that. Yeah, I know what you said. I felt different. Is that so? Yes. And when Spring and John brings the law down on all of us, what then, Arthur? Well, I guess we'll have another fight on our hands. Loyalty, Arthur, it ain't. I had a goddamn plan! John! John, you are my brother. You are my son. I was coming for you. They... They was talking of hanging me, Dutch. They was talking. They was talking. And now they may come and hang us all. Oh. oh boy. Um okay, so real quick, to be fair to Dutch, he's not wrong. He's not entirely wrong. Uh we us springing John out is big risk. Big giant risk and we did put people we did put people at risk by doing that. But we can also still keep moving. Dutch took this personally. Understandably so. But remember, right? Descent with descent with him, descent with the group. He can't separate the two anymore. There's so much going on here. And the thing that stands out to me, I think, the most is that Dutch keeps people around because he knows how to sell a plan or the idea that there's a plan. But it's like I say to you guys all the time, thinking about doing something is not doing something. Doing something is doing something. Well, Dutch can talk about getting John out, and he looks great in doing that, right? He says, oh, we're, we'll, spring, we'll spring John Marston out. I got a plan cooking for it. And everybody goes, oh, it's great. Dutch is on it. But that's not actually getting John out. We actually got John out. Sadie and Arthur had a plan and they executed that plan. Well, think about everybody in the group watching that happen. On one side, you have a person who talks a big game but isn't following through and has really not met expectations for a while here. And on the other hand, you have a person who didn't even necessarily rope the entire group into the anxiety of the process and went and got John back and executed it, somebody they also respect. If you're Dutch there, you know that that's a big deal for the group, and he just got massively undercut. Now, all of a sudden, him having a plan doesn't matter because Arthur executed a plan. Usually, people who talk a big game and don't back it up are hyper-threatened by people who actually get things done because their identity is built around ideas, not around execution. And you will often see them fight against that, do everything they can to get people prevented from actually making things happen. Because it's way easier to sit in ideal. Dutch talks about loyalty to the group. Arthur just showed loyalty to the group by going and getting John out of there, as dangerous as it was. So we're walking a walk while he's talking a talk. And the group, in getting fed up with this, is going to look at Arthur and go, holy shit, he actually got something done. And if Dutch loses his leadership of the group, if he loses the confidence and loyalty of the group, he's going to implode. And he knows it. And so we're going to probably see a string of overcompensation as a result of that.
Now, if you are, this is just me kind of spitballing here and thinking through some stuff. The Vanderlind gang, for as long as they've been around, has been a really slippery bunch. They're a very cohesive unit. And when they are a cohesive unit, it makes them that much harder to find and hold accountable. If you wanted to go big brain on how you mess with this group, the best way to get the Vanderlyn gang to stop being such a terror on every town we enter would be to break them up. And you can break tight-knit groups up through descent. So we have hypothesized that there is some sort of confederate amongst us. And we, Molly very well could have been that person. And I don't know how directly she would be involved in this, but like if you're a Pinkerton or if you're, if you're somebody else who hates the Vanderlins, you want this to happen. And this is the best way to do it. You, you undercut Dutch's confidence in himself in the group. And you get somebody else propped up. And so one of the things that I'm looking for is who benefits from all of the dissent within the group? Because I think we get a lot of information from that. And if I think right now about who's benefiting from dissent in this group, it's Micah. I don't think it's any accident that Micah's pictured in that frame standing next to Dutch. So I'm kind of nervous right now about Micah and his role in this group because he absolutely benefits from Arthur and Dutch going at it. He gets to kind of snake his way in here. I don't really know what motive he has to bust the group up. But I don't like Micah's presence amongst all of this right now. And that's kind of standing out to me. So, I don't know. Whether that goes anywhere, I have no idea. But it's just kind of a hypothesis that's sitting in my mind as I think about all of this is going down. But what a huge moment. And that moment happened in front of everybody. It'll be interesting to see what John Marston does and what the rest of the group does in orientation to that moment. Thinking of, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Dutch said to tell you he and Mike have gone to Annisburg. Something about Mr. Cornwall. Cornwall. Okay. Thanks, Mary Beth. What did I just say? That couldn't have been more perfect. Hi, Mary Beth. <laughs> oh, look who it is. Hello, Karen. <sighs> look who it is. Oh, Arthur. Big, tough Arthur. <laughs> You want to know something, Arthur? What? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I had something to say. I did. Take it easy, Karen. On the hooch. Why? Because a good sober life will bring me peace and contentment? What a crock of shit this world is. I know. And she's big struggling. Big struggling. You know, in fairness to the group, it is incredibly difficult to watch leadership fight. 
It's sort of like watching your parents argue. This is going to make the group incredibly uneasy. Incredibly uneasy. Because now we don't necessarily have cohesive direction as a subordinate group to the leadership. And that's only going to make tension go even up even higher. And so people are going to do whatever they can do to cope with that. Karen's drinking. The Reverend is throwing himself into work. Like people are going to do different stuff. And it's going to be, it's going to be rough. So, uh, we got a lot to unpack going forward here. I did real, some real shit is being set in motion here. And, uh, it's, it's going to be something else. So I am very much looking forward. Those of you that are watching the VOD to catching you on part 29. And before you go, uh, I would, uh, I just, you know, leave a comment. Make sure you like the video. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy what I do here. If you ever want to catch me live, I'm live at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, if you, you know, made a decision to become a member or to throw, throw a little tip my way while you were watching these because they've been meaningful to you in some way, I want to let you know that I appreciate it, but also just more than anything, I appreciate that you watch my stuff. The number one thing you can do to support this stream is to tell people about it. Uh, get more people over here. Um, and... You know, if this has an impact on you, tell people about it. It really helps a lot. Thank you for coming out. I'll catch you in part 29.